This is SDR News and Geekazine.com's coverage of NAB. Back on the show floor here at NAB at the HP booth, and I'm with David Humphrey. Uh, David's here from HP Autonomy, and I think he's got some really interesting technology that I know I saw at HP Discover and never really got a good idea of what it was. But tell me a little bit about uh, what you're here talking about. And we're here talking about broadcast monitoring and information understanding. So it's not just TV and radio programs and ingesting and understanding of those. It's actually bringing in all data sources. A uh, big key thing is data fusion. So we're trying to look at social media, web, news feeds, broadcast, bringing it all together, trying to understand what's going on and then trying to be able to help people to alert them to issues or to raise concerns or to actually create content that they can then redistribute. So it's basically filtering a massive amount of information that's out there in what's called the open source community and actually filtering that down to actionable entities and passing that actionable entities on to people. Well, I think a picture's worth a thousand words, so can I ask you to show me a demo of this? Yes, please come over and have a look. Okay, I just want to talk today about the uh, social media solution we have along with broadcast monitoring. What I'd like to present here is our real-time uh, social monitoring screen. We are showing the interactions with Twitter and in a minute broadcast and seeing what's going on in the world. Today is a particularly sad day, well for some people, for others it's a happy day because the ex-Prime Minister of the UK just died. Margaret Thatcher died this morning. If we have a look on this screen we've got multiple areas. Here we have a graphics showing the total Twitter tweets across time and actually as you see the peak at five o'clock now I happen to know background that that was the time when she died or she was announced to die there's a massive Twitter increase around that point over here we have the social buzz what that means is these are all the key concepts and concepts is an important thing you have to understand not keywords concepts that people are tweeting about as you see Margaret Thatcher is a big thing but we have stuff on Jerry Adams we have stuff on gun control we have some on the UK Prime Minister. You can see the relationships. Some of these are going to be connected with this topic. Others are separate topics entirely. Beneath here, we have all the real-time Twitters coming in. And these are the real-time Twitters associated with these feeds. I can actually click on a different feed and it will take me quickly to subjects that we're talking about. As a matter of interest, if I go to gun control, which I've lost, and if I come over to this side of the screen now, what we're seeing over here is the total Twitter information going on and then the, inf the information based on what I've just selected. So here we have multiple sources of Twitter or retweets because that's what we're starting to monitor. And actually we can look at the sentiment going from green to red. So we see most people are pretty okay about things, but interesting enough, NPR politics as a source is actually rather against gun control. It's an interesting observation. One final thing I'd like to show on this screen is actually what we can do is bring the broadcast monitoring up which is aligned with the Twitters. So now we're seeing the Twitter information and the broadcast monitoring information at the same time. What we do is we actually analyse in real time video and audio coming in, we understand the concepts of those programmes and we're matching the concepts. We are not doing keywords, keywords does not work. So here you've now got the interrelationship of two data feeds very difficult to do because the speed and reaction of Twitter is significantly different to an hourly broadcast monitoring. Oops. Yeah. So on this screen what we're able to do is actually filter by Korea criteria. So I've searched on North Korea, so it's everything about what's going on in North Korea, and then I've said okay, I want that relevant to places. So we've seen North Korea as a place, and then it's how it's distributed. So we can actually then go, okay, from another parameter, I want to have uh, source. So I now get North Korea, where it's referring to and from what source referred it to it as. So I can see that I've got Google documents here about North Korea and come down here and I've got CBC's talking about it and it just gives you a very good breakdown. I can click on an area and then actually go and see the reactions of through time for that source for that particular topic. Again, it's just allowing you to drive into detail. As I said earlier, visualization is very important. 
So I've seen that demo before at HP Discover, at least a, a different flavor of it, and it's, it's interesting. But the point you kept making that I think would be helpful for people to hear about from you, David, is you, you kept making it in, uh, the point that these are concepts, not keywords. Tell me a little bit about that, uh, that point that you were making during the demo. Okay, well, uh, what we are trying to do is get information to the end users as clearly and precisely as possible. In the real world, if there's two issues here, one is the way people talk about things. You can describe something by never ever mentioning that word. If a document had the word Apple in lots of times, it's probably not an important word. What, what you have to understand is what, what that overall document's talking about. And this is concepts. So we look at actually the structure of the language and what the whole thing's saying. And by then we can actually get a much more accurate opinion of what that subject's about. That also has a secondary item for broadcast monitoring because sometimes broadcast quality isn't very good. So we might miss the odd word or might not see the odd word on OCR. And, but if we're looking at the concepts, missing a single word here and there is irrelevant. We will get the concept. We will alert you to the issue. And I know that idle plays a big part of that. So tell folks a little bit that maybe don't know what idle is. How does idle, idle play into this whole okay. social monitoring? So idle is at the bottom of everything. Idle holds everything up. It's the most important thing we have. What idle does, it actually, as I said, understands concepts. How it does that, it understands the structure of language, understands, let's get technical here, the probabilistic use of different words with other words. So it understands when a word's a very important word and when a word isn't a very important word. It's all to do about the value of information. So idle actually uses that information to look at a text document and say that text document is irrelevant or that text is very important because it only mentions that word once but the whole concepts are talking around what you're looking for so idle underpins everything I probably should ask you this before but t tell folks what idle actually stands for intelligent data operating layer and as I see this social monitoring and the, these tools I mean we're obviously here at NAB and you're kind of fashioning this in terms of monitoring uh, news sources and sentiment about news but I see this it really kind of has applicability, that's an easy word for me to say, beyond what you know we're doing here at NAB. What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. So there's, there's a big push in the commercial area to understand what people are thinking about companies. So uh, historically, we've worked, for example, with one of the big broadcast studios where they were looking at what people thought about their actress and actress, actors. So what they were doing is saying, well, we're going to put films the way of the actors that people really like, and we will not put so much towards the actors that people don't like. In other areas, we use this huge cross data source fusion to understand whether a company has an issue with the product, whether a company's launches work very well. So, you know, we do a launch. How's it being picked up in social media? How's it being picked up on the web? Are we being seen on the telly? Are we getting our bang for our book? You know, so it's yes we go deep into government and deep into that sort of level of intelligence but we're also going massively into the commercial area now because people are realizing they've got to listen to the public and we're aware of people understanding what the public are saying yeah well david i find this stuff incredibly fascinating i know you came from a long way from uh, england and you're doing amazingly well having just got here yesterday but really appreciate you spending some time talking to me about this today thanks a lot for spending time asking us questions